you can hear the voice of God. The only question now is how do we position ourselves to hear the voice of God? And there's this really simple phrase for not only how to hear the voice of God, but actually how to steward and respond to what he says. And that phrase is to ask, listen, and respond. The first things that we do when it comes to hearing God's voice is just to ask. In Matthew 7, Jesus tells us, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks the door will be open. We need to ask to hear God's voice. We can ask him questions, ask him for help, ask for his opinion, his perspective, essentially start the conversation. In 1 Peter 5, we are told that nothing is too small to ask God about. It says, give all your worries and cares to God for he cares about you. Think about it this way, you can never annoy God. He is personally concerned with the smallest details of your life. He created you and so he is forever invested into you. And I think a lot of times when I mess up and I get into a bad situation, I don't want to ask God for help because I put myself in that situation. If I wouldn't have messed up, then I wouldn't be here. And so I should figure my way out of it because I put myself here. But that's not God's heart. And it makes me think about this one time where my dad told me that, you know, I was starting to get older, that if I ever found myself in trouble. If I was ever in a bad situation and if I needed help to always call him, no matter how bad the situation was, he would always come and get me no questions asked. And that kind of picture shows me the heart of our good father. You see, his primary concern is the safety and the well-being of his kiddos. He doesn't care how we got there, what the problem is. All he wants is for us to ask him, to call to him. And so the first step is to ask, to go to God. And then the next step is just to listen. Talking to God is a dialogue, not a monologue. With other people in your life, if all you ever do is talk at them and never listen to them, then it's not actually much of a relationship. And so we have to create space in our lives to actually listen. And there are five things that this could look like. Slow down, engage the scriptures, seek Him, pursue godly relationships, and ask for confirmation. In order to listen, sometimes we just have to slow down. God did this with the Israelites when he told them to take a Sabbath, that once a week for a whole day, not to work, but instead to focus on spending time with God. And that's not really a modern or a popular notion in our society, but what would it look like for you to take a Sabbath, to have a designated and reoccurring amount of time where you stop the busy, stop the have tos, and just focus on spending time with God, time to listen. What would it look like to, to put your phone down? Maybe say no to an opportunity or commitment to go on a walk, to pray, to go on a drive, sing worship music, but just take time to slow down. Something else we can do is engage the scriptures. You see, the Bible is the Word of God, and He writes like He speaks. And if you want to hear the voice of God, a great first step is to read the words of God. Everything that He says will be in alignment with what He has said. And when you put His words into your heart, you'll be able to pick them up in the middle of life. How you pick up your mom's voice in the middle of a grocery store. Like, I've heard her speak so many times that even if she's like two aisles away and I hear her cough, I know it's her. I can go and find her. That's what reading God's Word does. When we become familiar with His voice, it tunes our hearts in to be able to pick up on it more quickly. The next one is just to seek Him, to seek God's heart. Maybe it's not even necessarily an answer, but when we're waiting for God to speak to us, one of the best things we can do is to seek His heart. And so that might look like serving His people, living on mission, meeting the needs you see, encouraging somebody because the heart of God is people. The next one is to pursue godly relationships. People who can hear God's voice will help you hear God's voice. And when you feel like you're getting radio silence, you've been asking, you've been slowing down, engaging the scriptures, your godly relationships can help you. They have the spirit of God in them and you have the spirit of God in you. And so maybe we're just missing something. Maybe we have a blind spot so they can come and pray with you. Godly relationships. And so the last one is just to ask for confirmation. I mean, sometimes we can get a sense that like we're hearing from God, but we're not totally sure and, and that's okay. We can ask God for confirmation. So just go through this checklist. Does it align with scripture? Does godly counsel confirm it? Does it require faith? Does it lead me towards Jesus? And is there a sacred echo? 
And if all of those things are yes, then we can have the confidence to say that this is the voice of God, and then we can move on to step three, which is respond. In James 1, it says, do not merely listen to the word so that you deceive yourselves, but do what it says. When we hear from God, we now have a responsibility to do something with what He has said, to apply it to our lives, to move it forward, to steward it. And until we do, God usually isn't gonna say anything new to us. If you're ever not hearing anything from God, just go back and ask, what was the last thing God said to me? And what did I do with it? And He actually does this out of love. Because if we just keep asking for Him to speak, but we never actually do anything with what He says, it actually hardens our hearts and blocks our ears from hearing Him the next time. And He doesn't want that for you. And so He will keep leading you back to your last next step, the last thing He said before He gives you a new one. When we do something with what God says, God can give us even more. What we do with what we heard yesterday determines what we hear today. And if we wanna hear the voice of God, we are told to ask, to listen, and respond. God is speaking to you. You can hear His voice. It is a promise. And so let's find ways to ask, listen, and respond.